Hey everybody, it's Andrew back again, and I have my review here today of the HP Pavilion Plus here for 2023. And what this brings to the table is something pretty interesting. A lot of features, but it won't break the bank. This comes in sub $1,000. You get an IMAX enhanced 14 inch OLED display with a 2.8K resolution, 120 Hertz. It's running a very good processor, the AMD Ryzen 7 7840U. That's based on the Zen 4 architecture. It's got a host of other features that I think are gonna make this a great bang for the buck. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is the HP Pavilion Plus here for 2023. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unit itself, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by HP. I'm not being sponsored by HP. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. HP is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from HP, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Pricing for the Pavilion Plus 14 starts at $549.99. Price as tested here today, $939.99. I think it's a good deal, although I know HP runs a lot of discounts, so make sure you hit the link in the description below for more information and the latest pricing. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Okay, so right off the bat, we're greeted by some documentation. Here looks like a startup setup instructions. Looks like we have some warranty information, yada, yada, yada. Uh, we've got the unit itself, and it seems pretty light right off the bat. Uh, not too bad. We'll get to that in a moment. And then, of course, the power charger, which is right here. All right, so we have a 65-watt USB. Is a USB Type-C? I would imagine it is. Yes, 65-watt uh, USB Type-C charger right there. Pretty compact, not too bad. And then, of course, you've got your power cord right there. And I can tell you right off the bat, nice all metal design here. You can see it there. Pretty nice build here. Again, a little bit of flex right there. You maybe you can see it there. Little bit, not too bad. Again, Pavilion line is not gonna be the Spectre line, right? Glad they went away from that circle logo and you get the nice logo here. So let's uh, see if we can open this up with one finger. We can. So the unit alone is 1.392 kilograms. And that is three pounds, 1.1 ounces, okay? With the power cord and the power charger, you get a total travel weight of 1.681 kilograms or three pounds, 11.3 ounces. So I would say all in all, a pretty light laptop to take with you on the go. We like that here, of course. Okay, let's check out the port selection on the left side is a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. Next to that is a legacy port, a USB type A port. Good to see that, of course. Moving over to the right side are two USB type C ports, the 3.2 Gen 2, unfortunately not USB 4. That would have been great to get the Thunderbolt like support. You don't get that on this, unfortunately, but they are full function, supporting data, charge, and display out. Next to that is an HDMI 2.1 port, supporting resolutions up to 4K 60. And finally, a second USB type A port to round out the ports on this laptop. All in all, pretty good port selection, notably missing, there's no SD card reader of any sort. Now, as far as what's user upgradable, the RAM unfortunately is soldered into the motherboard, so you won't be able to upgrade that yourself. My review unit has 16 gigabytes of DDR5 6400 megahertz RAM, and it is running in dual channel mode. And it seems like 16 gigabytes is the most you can get on this. I didn't see an option for 32, although I wasn't totally expecting that, this being a mid-tier laptop at best. So you really are constrained to that 16 gigabytes of RAM, but for most people, that is gonna be perfectly enough to do what you need to do with this laptop. Now, what is user upgradable is the NVMe PCIe Gen 4 SSD storage. And as you can see from these very good reads and writes, certainly fast enough for what you need this laptop to do. And as far as wireless is concerned, you're looking at MediaTek Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3. That combo card is slotted in. That means you can change it out down the road. It's not soldered in. And by the way, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth have been working flawlessly. I've had no issues with either one. 
Now, a couple of things to note while we're inside here. This has the bigger 68 watt hour battery. There's also an option for a 51 watt hour battery. We'll talk about battery life later on. Spoiler alert, it's actually pretty good. Now, as far as the fan is concerned, this is a single fan for cooling, although next to it, you'll notice a dummy fan slot or what you call a decoy. That is actually not a second fan, although it potentially could have a second fan if they wanted to. They chose not to, of course. I guess they were repurposing a chassis from another laptop or what have you. So that is definitely very interesting to see that there's no doubt about it all right let's talk about the display and they're calling this the imax enhanced oled display it is a 2.8k resolution that's 2880 by 1800 120 hertz refresh rate which you gotta like 407 nits of brightness is what i got in terms of my measurements although they claim it 400 nits so i got above that that's good excellent coverage of the color gamut here excellent color accuracy really high contrast the really deep blacks the super vibrant colors all the hallmarks of an oled display are here that means if you're going to do do creative work in Lightroom, Photoshop, video editing, color grading. This is an excellent panel to do those tasks. And having the 120 hertz refresh rate means you're going to get that really smooth, very fluid experience, although you will take a bit of a hit on battery life. But the good news is they do have the dynamic refresh rate mode, which will switch between 60 and 120. That'll allow you to get a little bit more battery life, or you can run it at 60 hertz and you'll definitely get more battery life. We'll get into the battery life numbers later on in this review. And spoiler alert, they're actually pretty good. Now, a couple of things to note. This is a non-touch display. I don't think there's a touch option available. So just so those are wondering, you don't have that option. And it is an HDR display. So watching high dynamic range content in Netflix, Amazon, YouTube has actually been really good. What you're watching right now is in HDR. And I think it looks really, really sharp, really, really good. Now, of course, they also offer this in an IPS Full HD Plus display, but I'm a big fan of this OLED display. If you're going to be getting this laptop, in my opinion, this is the display to get. So this is the five megapixel camera here on the HP Pavilion Plus here for 2023. Five megapixels, 1440p video is what you're seeing here. A couple of things to note, there is a physical shutter switch above the camera that allows you to turn off the camera for more security and privacy. You gotta like that. It also is an IR camera. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. Now, as far as the camera itself is concerned, this is gonna be good for your Zoom calls, for your work from home needs, hybrid work needs, this certainly will get the job done. It also has the studio effects from Windows. Of course, you got the auto framing or the eye contact here, and you also get the background blur effect. You could do the standard blur or the portrait blur as you see here. So a lot of options at your fingertips. I think HP has been really killing it here in 2023, and this is no exception, a lot of, controls at the user's fingertips, and I gotta love that. So what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. A really good job here by HP, in my opinion. Okay, let's talk performance. And as I mentioned earlier, this is running the AMD Ryzen 7 7840U with the integrated Radeon 780M graphics. And if it sounds familiar, well, it is because we just looked at the Framework Laptop 13 running the same chipset. Although the performance on this is not quite as good as that one, but very good nonetheless. As you can see from the single thread and multi-thread performance numbers here, it is very good. So if you're gonna do Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, it all will work very well with this chipset. And here you can see the Cinebench R23 single core performance, 1633, which is pretty good actually for an AMD processor. And as you can see from the multi-core result here, 12,475, certainly holding its own. And I wanna say that the integrated Radeon graphics here, the 780M, are a definite step up over the integrated solution provided by Intel, the Iris Xe graphics, which are in a dire need of a refresh. This certainly beats that and we're seeing some pretty good scoring as far as gaming is concerned here as far as frame rates per second of course you will have to lower some of the settings to get some more playable frame rates on some of the more popular titles but they are doable with this integrated graphic solution so that's been pretty good and good news when it comes to thermal throttling. When I ran the Time Spy stress test, it got a score of 97.7%, which is of course above the 97% passing score, meaning it detected very little, if any, thermal throttling, also maintaining good CPU temperatures as well, even under heavy loads. So that is good news when it comes to thermal throttling. 
And when it comes to the surface temperatures, I never saw it get overly hot, never too hot to the touch, actually stayed relatively cool throughout, even under heavy load, even on the underside, maybe 41, 42 degrees Celsius, but nothing overly hot. So very impressive when it comes to the surface temperatures. And it remained pretty quiet under heavy load, never going above 39, 40 decibels, even under that heavy load. So when you're doing normal tasks, you certainly won't hear the fans very much. And even under heavy load wasn't much of an issue. And good news continues here with the battery life, getting 10 hours and 47 minutes on the PC Mark 10 Modern Office battery test. It did 11 hours and eight minutes on the video playback. That's with the 120 Hertz enabled, and that's with the 2.8K OLED display. Now, of course, it's not quite as good as what we saw on the Framework Laptop 13. That did 12 hours and 12 minutes on the Modern Office test and 12 hours and 43 minutes of video playback, but that had a 60 Hertz refresh rate. Here we had the 120 Hertz enabled, Expect another hour, maybe hour and a half if you lower it down to 60 hertz, or if you go to the dynamic refresh rate, expect a little bit better battery life than what we're seeing with the 120 hertz enabled, but the overall takeaway is very good battery life on this laptop. Now, for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. And as far as the hinges themselves are concerned, well made here. I saw very little, if any, screen wobble when typing. That's a big pet peeve of mine. I didn't see it here, and that's a good thing. Now, the keyboard itself, I really do like it as far as the tactility, the key travel, the overall feedback has been very good. I found it comfortable for typing out long documents, emails, and the like. I really do like this keyboard. And they went away from the silver keys to a darker gray keys as far as seeing it with the multi-stage backlight here that allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment it was easier to see than last year's model so that's a good improvement right there now as far as the touchpad it's a really good precision touchpad i thought as far as two finger scrolling doing all the gestures everything seemed to be very fluid and smooth no issues with regards to the touchpad everything works as you'd expect Okay, let's talk audio, and it's audio by Bang & Olufsen, dual speakers, HP Audio Boost is present here. I would say it's okay, volume is pretty decent, could use a little bit more bass, mids are okay. I would say uh, they're pretty good, these speakers. I've heard better on other laptops in these categories, but uh, not bad at all. But I want you to be the judge, you let me know what you think in the comment section below. Now, let's give it a listen. Okay, let's wrap it all up. What do I think about the HP Pavilion Plus 14-inch laptop here for 2023? There's a lot to like here. Good overall performance, long battery life, gorgeous OLED display, all-metal chassis, the solid build quality, the 1440p IR webcam, the comfortable keyboard, and it runs cool and quiet under load. The negatives, there's no USB 4 support, and it has soldered RAM, although most laptops in this category are now sporting soldered RAM. Not much of an issue, of course, with the frame. 13 laptop that we looked at but that's not the case here but those are not deal breakers by any stretch ladies and gentlemen i think the pavilion plus 14 has a good price to performance ratio it gives you a lot of bang for the buck and i have no hesitation recommending it here for 2023 so please hit the like button please subscribe please share this video don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and that platform formerly known as Twitter. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.